Hi, Lucas here and today from my living room because I need a bit more space and um, actually a table in front of me. Uh, I hope the sound is all right because it's a bit of a reverb here. Um, I hope it's good enough so you can understand me. So uh, let's get going. Today I will show you something big, um, you can see it right in front of me actually. This is the JTZ DP30 Filmmaker System. The DP30 Filmmaker System consists of a few parts. So this kit is not like a complete set that you buy as a whole. You buy the separate parts that you need. Because of course you can use the battery plate in a different um, setup. You can for example mount it directly to a Blackmagic Ursa camera and you can buy the the mat box for your existing rig if you only need that but you can also use only the cage or only the follow focus but together these things um, happen to work together perfectly fine there's um, something magical about the whole system when you use everything from them but still you can uh, use it separately just as well so in this video specifically we will talk about the cage here in the middle um, but only to show you what we have here we also have like this battery plate which is awesome and I, I really love it and I, I'm looking forward to that video then we have like the matte box here very strong very good matte box we have this nice follow focus with a few nice new features that I didn't saw before in other follow focus and also we have some sort of shoulder kit um, that I have here separately the problem is it's a bit hard to show when it's not on a tripod we have this nice arm which also extends um, with a nice grip with controls on them like it's like a bit like the Ursa camera or I think the FS7 or FS5 from Sony it's like the same approach with a reset mount that you can mount on here and of course a shoulder um, shoulder pad that also attaches quite nicely we'll come to those later but uh, for now we will concentrate on the cage so this is the cage more or less naked and um, in this case i'm using a panasonic gh5 in here but this cage also works with the gh3 and the gh4 and um, but there are also other cages for like sony cameras and and many others um, also there's a kit for the ursa and the sony cameras the fs7 and so on and so forth um, they are all a bit different uh, when it comes to feature sets what you can do with them and also, of course, in the shape and the build. Uh, this one is for Panasonic cameras, but be aware that there are others maybe for your camera. So you can see this as some sort of general overview for the other cages too. Actually, I don't really know yet where I want to begin with this review because there's much to say about it. Um, maybe we talk with the packaging. This is the nice box that you get with um, this cage. And in every box from this JTZ system is not only the stuff that you get, in some of them, not in all of them, is like a little manual, um, in this case for the top handle and uh, the cage itself, and also some uh, accessories. In this case, uh, we have lots of cables for the lang stuff, we come to that later, but also a little box. And this is in nearly any uh, package of the JTZ stuff, is this little box. And in this box, we have like spare parts, like little screws. We have spare uh, thumb screws we have all the allen keys that we need to assemble things or disassemble this cage and we also have like a little lens holder that you can mount directly onto the cage we also get a short little hdmi cable in three different ways this one like is with uh, my mini hdmi i think and there's a micro hdmi cable and also a full hdmi cable for the gh5 depending on the camera if you have a gh3 4 or 5 and this cable goes into this little space here on top you can see there's this little spare out and you can screw it tight here the sense behind this is that you can attach this cable to your camera so it stays in place, doesn't um, is not in the way, so it's like a more secure connection. And then this part, the, the normal HDMI A connector is on top and can connect to any EVF that you might have or any display and does not break your camera's port. You can see there's a bit of space between, a little bit of gapping between the camera and the cage. So it's not like super tight and form fitting. But uh, the thing is with this, it can reach every knob and every, every button, every wheel, just perfectly fine. This is a pretty cool thing. Of course, we can use the screen. We can get it out, we can twist it. It's not in the way of the cage. This is very nice. One thing that might seem this way, so on the GH5, like you have 
uh, the SD card door does not get full open anymore. But still, even at this angle, you can perfectly find um, change SD cards and swap both slots if you need and if you want to. Also underneath, we have of course our battery uh, battery door that we can still open because there's a hole and just for the battery door, very fine. So while we have all the Allen keys that we need to, to tighten and loosen screws, for example, for the HDMI and so on and so forth, still the major design of this cage of this whole system is toolless, that you don't need any tools like when you're on the set. This is more like for the preparation parts. For example, I have this dovetail underneath here with my uh, tripod plate. This is from my tripod and then we have the dovetail. And I have this red switch here, I get it off and now I can um, move the dovetail underneath the base plate. It's secured so it cannot come off. I have this little whip and now I can remove it. Very easy. Can close it, open it, whatever. Then we have um, a different part, like we have this other red lever here and if we lose this the cage comes off you can see again we have like this little lever here that holds the cage in place if we push it we can get our base plate off here we have a rosette mount to um, for example to connect our arm that we have if we don't want to connect it directly to our base plate because we would maybe want to get a bit lighter or have like a little smaller setup we can also screw it directly to the cage which has also um, uh, a rosette mount on the side next to as you can see millions and millions of uh, one fourth inch threads we have one last red lever on our base plate here and also again a little safety pin that we have to push down this one holds the camera in place so when we remove this then we can detach our camera it hangs here with a little um, cable and this plate is specifically made for the GH5 there's a different plate for the GH3 and GH4 which won't fit this camera and this one holds the camera perfectly in place also this plate is not exactly but pretty much compatible with any um, Arca Swiss device I had here in my flat so I don't have any Arca Swiss device uh, but uh, this one works pretty neatly with my hats and uh, other base plates it's not the same but it, it, it's somehow working together very well so this is the bulk cage you can see here like the little mounting that we have for our lens support um, where we can screw directly into an adapter this is especially interesting for the Metabound speed booster adapters which have like a little thread in air underneath that you can uh, secure them with your cage very cool all the parts we need for this to be secured properly uh, are included in our uh, little box that chips with the system and we can also reposition this uh, uh, this a bit and uh, this is a pretty cool system uh, to have around if you need to secure your adapters a bit more or if you want to. There's also this little piece to give support uh, on a more general basis for heavy lenses that might not um, have like an, an own thread to, to screw onto. So this one will go to any uh, focal reducer that you might have or any ad other adapter, of course. Then we have also other funky stuff here. We have like a second piece for HDMI uh, for the HMI cable to secure any place where we want it. Of course, there are screws for this. And also we have some sort of um, 50 millimeter rod adapter that we can screw in here. We have like this little pin here, which will stay in other places like so it won't twist. For example, if we want to screw it tight here, this is very cool. I think actually this is pretty neat that we have like spare parts and other parts and screws and everything sorted for us. This is pretty neat. Another big thing about this cage is the top handle. So it's not only a top handle that you have like a little nether rail here that you can change in position. Um, this has also some fancy buttons on it. So it, there's also a cable as you can see here. Um, and this grip, this handle has some nice features. We have a 1 4th inch thread on here. We have like a cold shoe adapter on, on here and then we have lots of buttons. To understand it a bit better, we have um, the setup guide for the handle. There are actually two handles as you can see here. I have this one here, which can carry up to 18 kilograms, which is quite a lot. And of course there's another one, more heavy duty one for 30 kilograms. And all the buttons up on here 
are made for the JTZ Link system. And JTZ Link is a very cool system. It's a bit hard to explain. I, I will, I think, make an video only on JTZ Link, so to explain it a bit better, because I don't have all the parts that I need for explaining it yet. Basically, it's some sort of LANG protocol. So LANG is, is a way to remote control your camera. Some camera let you do more about LANG and other remote protocols and some less. The Panasonic, unfortunately, is one that does a little bit less of the options, but I will have another camera ready to show you what you can do with it. So basically the most basic one that I will talk about today only is the big red one which is basically a record button. So when we hit it the camera will record um, given that the little cable here is connected and of course our handle is connected with the little cable to our cage. Further we have an hold button. So in the hold position the camera won't record. When we release it again the camera will record again. You might have already seen it. There's also a 50 millimeter rod adapter in front of our grip here with a little um, thumb screw on. And this one is meant to hold your EVFs. So basically you would attach a rod here and can place your EVF on this position. So when you have the camera on the shoulder, you have it on the perfect, on the perfect position. This will also work with displays obviously so you can just hold hang them directly to your cage let's talk a bit about the cables and connections here because as you can see here there's some electronics built into this like a computer chip inside the cage and this one transmits um, the remote signals to this cable that we connect to our camera now if you have connected the little cable from the cage directly to your camera and any handle be the top handle or like the front handle that you have with the shoulder kit um, to the cage in one of these inputs um, you have like a normal length connection and as you can see here now the camera is on uh, of course it's filming on my belly <laughs> And I don't have a cam card right now handy, so if, if I press the record button here, you can see it screams for a card because it cannot record. But basically, um, this thing will try to record uh, my signals. This is pretty cool because now I can use my camera, my GH5, a bit like a camcorder in the older days. So it's very well balanced here, as you can see. I have one finger here. I have a nicely balanced camera with a relatively heavy lens. For when I use two fingers in it, one is like very good in my hand and now I can use it like an old camcorder I can just press here for recording have four other buttons that we get into in another video and I have this um, very nice running gun setup so to understand the connections in the front a bit better we have this little manual here again and <laughs> it's um, a bit hard to follow we have like these nice diagrams here in this side and in this side and basically it depends a bit on how you want to connect. So in a very simple setup like this one where we only have this handle and or this handle here, we only need one cable connected to our cage and we can go just right away um, and work out uh, like this. Then there are though some other <laughs> setups that you can see on the right side of this manual where we need some power. Next to our normal audio jacks which uh, transmit the LANG signals we also have like a little DC in which is actually a USB-C connection. Like there is no cable included in this package but the USB-C cable is not that expensive. We can power it directly from the battery pack that we will get in another video to see. And then you can use other things. Uh, one thing I cannot really show you now, which I find really interesting, I don't have this handy right now. I want to show you in another video when I have one, is that we can use um, flash transmitters, uh, like for normal photo flashes. And we can use this to connect to our hot shoe here. This is not a cold shoe, this is actually a hot shoe. And then place the receiver on another camera and trigger um, trigger the operations that we have uh, like over wireless connection. So basically I could use my GH5 that I have here, pull the trigger for recording and like my G7 that is filming me right now um, would also directly start recording when it's like in a remote connection when I have a like hanging on the ceiling with a gorilla pod or whatever. So this is really handy if you have some sort of um, setup where you might need this as a single operator with multiple cameras. Usually also like right now I use um, a tablet or a smartphone to con control my other camera. Let's, you know, 
just as I do it now to see what I'm doing here. Also to check the focus and stuff like that, if my hair sits. And um, if you don't do this, if you don't need this, or if you have like more cameras and you need, you don't have an iPad or, or a tablet or a phone for every, uh, every piece, uh, then you can use it with like the wireless connection, which is pretty neat. I've never saw this before on any art gauge. So this is everything that I have on my mind right now. If you have additional questions, of course, drop them in the comments. Let's talk about um, the shoulder kit that we have. So like we have this little um, grip here. And basically we can mount this on very different uh, and very different ways. We can mount this handle, by the way, on this way, on, on this. I have, I have it now like for my right hand. I can hold it like this. But you can also mount, um, you can unscrew this and place uh, this part on the other side and have it like holding it with your left hand if you want to, if you need to. For example, if you have an Orsa camera, an Orsa Mini, and you have the shoulder kit from them, you can also use this shoulder kit to have like a second handle on the left, which is a pretty neat setup. So this also perfectly fine attaches to the side of the cage so we can like use it like this uh, i think this is the normal way that you can like attach also the the grip to the ursa mini camera or to the fs7 or i think it was in the past with the fs100 from sony and uh, you can basically also reposition it if you want to hold the camera like this or whatever usually i would only connect this hand grip directly to the extending arm that we have here which is also very well built and uh, also very strong We have little um, holders here for the cable that you need to connect like the handle to our cage again And with the reset mount we can either connect directly to the cage or to our base plate So this is a very cool setup now and you can already see how strong this arm is by the way Let's extend it here just for a second It's much nicer to use it when it's long, but it's not nicer to carry around when it's short and as you can see this connection is really strong. So this is pretty cool. And what we need now only is a shoulder pad. I showed you this small dovetail before and also there is this bigger dovetail. And really the only difference between the two is the length because the shoulder pad itself can be easily detached and attached to this one. So basically we have this again, the red lever, lose it. And then we have like this little um, place where the shoulder pad would go in. And we can also use this on the little dovetail. So basically we get just uh, get it here and make it tight and then we can also use it like this. The thing is I really like to use the big dovetail. So with the small dovetail fully extended I cannot really watch <laughs> do anything from my camera. So basically now I have uh, the camera next to my head. I cannot see what's on the display. When I have an EVF this might not be that important but still for this uh, my typical setup this is not like, really convenient. Another thing is that it's so short I cannot attach any tripod plate that I might have directly to the dovetail. So with the long dovetail, I can easily still have a look on my camera's display right in front of me. Maybe could even use a display loop in this setup. And also I can, if I really want to have the camera next to my head, I can still um, shove it around with the dovetail, which is pretty cool. Also, I have enough space to attach a tripod plate directly to my dovetail. So basically I could like get this on a tripod and then get it off and directly put it onto my shoulder when I need it. On the shoulder pad we also have holes for 50mm rods in case we wanted to connect our battery plate directly onto here. So this sits very nicely on the shoulder actually and uh, what I really like is that we can reposition it a bit if we might, uh, if we need or want to. And with a battery plate or like a counterweight in place you can really like handle this camera for a properly long time in this setup. Um, now the arm does not extend more than this so this is like the maximum that you can get. Of course you can position it so it's a bit like closer to you. Maybe I'll show you just a second. So maybe like this if you want to but it really depends a bit on how you like to hold your camera and on what, what, what's your style of shooting. I personally like it a bit more up front. So this is the little accessory box that we get with our shoulder kit 
I have a little cable in here. Actually, there are way more cables than this one. There are cables in all shapes and sizes, also like these little trolley cables that extend really long um, to connect everything together. Then we have like another thumb screw and so on and so forth. What we also have, and this is really cool, is a little plastic adapter for different sorts of rosette. For the handle itself, I would recommend getting one of these, these little pads that go around your hand when holding it because it's a lot more convenient and uh, grippy for you to um, hold it with this. This is not included. I think this is a part of maybe two dollars or something like that. I would really recommend using one of these straps with the grip. What you can see now is we have lots and lots of controls on top of our handle here. We have also like the little, the little, the big red button here for recording. We have different uh, connectors for the cables as you can see down here is also one on the other side and on top there are two the whole uh, little switch here and then not only one two but three wheels to a degree which is pretty neat and um, these have different functions uh, that you can use for example what you can use as you can read on here you can use them to focus you can use them for zoom and you can use them to control the iris. The third one is to set the speed of the operations and the little switch on the bottom is to change between zoom and focus. Before you get too excited, uh, things like focus um, don't work with a Panasonic camera because Panasonic, in back in the day, with camcorders, they had two length connections, one for recording and the zoom and one for the focus, so it was separated. The GH5 unfortunately only has the, the one that controls the recording and the zoom. So basically you cannot change the focus with this handle, which is a bit of a bummer because I was really eager to do just that. You cannot do this with a GH5 at least. I have no idea how this works on the uh, Sony cameras. What I can tell you though is that the focus and iris at least work perfectly fine on a Blackmagic Ursa camera because I tested this before when you use this handle, which is pretty cool. It's not as convenient for me actually as a follow focus, but it's a really nice feature that you have uh, quite literally right at your fingertips. So with a Panasonic camera, you could control the zoom of your lens. The problem is that the most lenses that you might use or might want to use have like this lens, um, a mechanical uh, zoom that you just pull. Of course, you cannot control this even with the native Panasonic lenses. There are these powered zoom lenses that you can control with a little lever on the side of the, of the lens. It might work with those, I don't have one to test. This might work, but still, those are not the nicest lenses around, so it's maybe not too recommended, but still, uh, it's a feature that you have. Maybe not with the camera you're using right now, but for the future, or if you rent another camera, or if you, you borrow one from a friend, you can totally utilize this grip, as I do, for example, with an Ursa camera. So that's it for now. Uh, so we talked about the cage and the, the shoulder mount system and I will sh demonstrate here you again how strong this arm is. It's really interesting. Quite strong. It's actually a bit stronger than my own arm. So <laughs> this is um, the JTC DP30 um, Filmmaker system and we will return in another video um, about the other parts like the matte box, the battery plate and follow focus that I have <laughs> somewhere around here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And I hope to see you next time and uh, bye.